Edge of Radio. On today's episode, Missy and I are talking about staying grounded. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace. This is the podcast where Misty and I talk about keeping our inner peace on a daily basis, regardless of what's going on in life, and giving some practical tips on how to do so. And uh, if you're watching this on video, I am a little in the background, darkish, but I guess that's the lighting. Um but it's good to see you again. It's, it's been a little bit since we've uh, done this, Missy. Yeah, I know. There's been uh, part of the reason for the podcast. There's been so much activity <laughs> in the month of April for the both of us that it's, uh, you know, it's been um, troublesome trying to mesh schedules to make sure that we could get this taken care of. But very enjoyable, very enjoyable April. And I'm glad to be back and, and see you again. Yep. No, it, it's definitely good to be back. And, and our topic is going to definitely talk about uh, some of those struggles because, uh, you know, we're, we're not the only two, I'm sure, that yeah. have scheduling struggles because of life. Um, you know, I know, you know, I couldn't get together a few times because either of my work schedule or medical appointments or uh, just life happening. So, um yeah, trying to keep that inner peace will be uh, a good topic to talk about. And um, speaking of, this is the first time I've been able to sit outside in a while. Yeah. So it's it's nice to be back outside, even though you may not be able to see my face. But um, but I see you're inside. I am because it's hot. I'm in Florida and it's like a 100 degree heat index today. So I think I'll just soak up the AC while I am so grateful that we have that kind of luxury in life, you know, but um, it's, it's nice for you, you know, spring has sprung. And uh, I think that's kind of part of like the busyness that's been going on. It's like, you know, we, we come out of hibernation and we're going into Mm -hmm. activity season. And um, so I thought that, you know, I know that everything that I've been through event after event, weekend after weekend, visit after visit, um, that it was, um, it was definitely a great learning experience and I enjoyed it thoroughly. And looking back, I'm going, wow, I actually did keep my peace. And I would say 99.9% of the time. And, and um, that, that, that's huge, you know, because when mm-hmm. we're uh, creatures of habit, like I am, you know, I like to have my downtime. I like to spend time doing things that I enjoy. And, and sometimes when events are happening, there's a lot of activity. You don't always get that chance. And sometimes it can piss you off, excuse my language. But um, so far, I, you know, like I said, uh, for the last four, four weeks, it's been um, very neutral. And um, that's not something I think I've had the luxury of being able to experience when things have been so right on top of each other in the past. Hmm. So what's your, your typical MO when, when all this stuff kind of comes all at once and there, there's events back to back or people back to back? Exhaustion. <laughs> Exhaustion. <laughs> um, is, yeah. I hear that. <laughs> there, there's typically um, a lot of chefs in the kitchen, kitchen in my family. And, um, you know, I have learned to just kind of like, let it flow and however it flows and it doesn't have to be my way. And, um, you know, I'll make a suggestion or give advice. And if it goes, it goes, if it doesn't, then it wasn't meant to be, everything works out perfectly. And, um, so my typical MO is exhaustion, um, you know, unworth, you know, not feeling worthy because my, my ideas weren't heard, I would think. And, um, and a lot of irritation, I would say that's that's how I've been in the past. And now I will tell you that it's been years since I've had events like this one on top of another. So I would have to say 
thank God for the growth. You know, I'm very grateful that I can see myself differently, that I've shifted my ways of being. And as a result, not only was I more at peace, but I feel like the people that I got to interact with and, you know, family members, the events, the circumstances, everything shifted. So, and that's huge because that definitely, you know, keeps you in the mindset that you are grounded in, in the beliefs of, you know, for me, I would say it's, uh, you know, being in the flow of life rather than trying to control life. And it's like trying to wrangle an elephant that's mad, right? You know what I mean? And that's what I've done in the past. But um, <clears throat> here in the future, now I'm just like sitting on a boat and riding the waves and, and it's just been really nice. Yeah, and, and I, I can empathize with what you're saying, um, especially the you know last part of, of kind of just being on the boat and letting the waves you know ride, and that that's been a, a long growth process for me, um, coming from being very Type A and and I wouldn't say a controller because I, I never put myself out there to be one, but internally a controller. Yeah. So if yeah. things weren't going the way that I would like it to be going or that I thought it should be going, uh, you know, that caused a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress internally. Yeah. And I've begun to learn over the years and maybe it's wisdom with age. I don't know, but I kind of have in a positive way that this and this probably is a, maybe a grounded attitude, but just the attitude of I really don't care. <laughs> and, and I say in a positive way. <laughs> and and yeah, old men are so lucky, I swear. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Whatever. Women can do this too. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, not you know, not in the sense that I don't care about anything. You know, I mean, I do no, care. No. But but when it comes to you know how things maybe are being done or what people around me are doing, you know, it's just more of a fine. You know, you you kind of do what you're going to do and, and enjoy your life. And, yeah. and you know, and, and I find that more as my older kids come over with the grandkids and, you know, they want to shift things around in the house or do things outside the way they want to do it. And in the past, I would have been all over the place, fixing it all and changing it or trying to say, yeah, you sure. Um, but now I just kind of sit back and, watch the grandkids have a fun time and let the kids do what the kids are going to do. And, and that's where the, I just don't care comes in. You know, and, and I, I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that. And I, I kind of have a different term for it. I say staying in my own lane, right. You know, which is something new that, you know, someone kind of pointed that out to me. Oh, you're staying in your own lane. And I'm like, you're right. I'm not meddling in other people's business. I'm not judging them for whatever they're doing. I'm not, worried about what they're doing. I'm not trying to orchestrate what they're doing or have any influence over it. And so, and it feels good. Like it feels good mm -hmm. to stay in my own lane. It feels comfortable and safe and, you know, like all of the good things, but I'm still pushing my boundary by staying in my own lane and not being right. other people's business, you know? Um, and it's funny because like you mentioned some of the things with kids and I have a 16 year old who just got his license in December. He, you know, turned 16 in October, but late, late because of COVID for the license. And then in January, he got his motorcycle license. Now I, I ride mm. motorcycles. Um, my significant other rides motorcycles. I'm not going to tell my kid he can't ride a motorcycle. Right. And um, he wants this, you know, hella fast bike. And I'm like, <laughs> The mom in me is like, no, no, that's a bad idea. Da, 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 you know, all this other stuff. And the staying in my lane person is like, okay, well, we'll have to see how it goes. Like, you're just, he's got his own intuition. He's got, and I have girlfriends who are like, what? No, what? <laughs> he's still young. He's still 16. <laughs> you can still tell him what to do. And I'm like, yeah, but that doesn't make me feel good. Like, I don't want to mm -hmm. do that. I don't want, I want my kid to be able to come to me and show me his dreams and say, mom, I'm going after this. And me to be like, go for it, kiddo, you know? And, and sometimes that's not going to look like what a typical parent or a, a society person, you know, a normal society person would, would think, but 
they come to me and they trust me and they love me and and they know that I'm there to support them. I mean, he, he's been riding great and that's wonderful. And then all of a sudden he's like, hey mom, I think I'm gonna quit my job and start my own business. And I'm like, awesome, that's wonderful news. And so he's gotten his LLC established. He's gotten his EI, you know, he's done the things and and he's making money already, you know, and it's only been a month nice. that his kid's been doing this. So I'm like, if, if everybody had the ability to stay out of everybody else's business, I, you know, and I, I get that there's, there's times when people come to you and they ask your advice, mm-hmm. but I have been more apt lately to point them to their own inner guidance system and have them think about it, sit with it and, and make their own decision from their own, um, inner, inner guidance system. Right. And, um, and it, like I said, it helps me to stay grounded too. Cause again, I'm staying in my own lane, not in anybody mm-hmm. else's business and God forbid anything crazy happened to my kid, but I, you know, I don't know what his path is. I don't know what his purpose here is here on earth. Now, do I want that? God, no, God, no, <laughs> but will I be able to control it? Never. I'll never be able to control it. And the peace the staying grounded part is me being able to know that, that he's right. got it. He's got his own, you know, um, inner guidance system, I guess, and instincts and, and yeah, and he's going to make it no matter what he's going to do great. Mm-hmm. So I just want to enjoy that while I can. Well, you know, since he's got his own business and making money, you know, I mean, the show could always have sponsors. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> it would be great for Englewood in Northport, Florida. I'm not so sure about Maryland, unless we're going to make a trip. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Um, but no, I, I, I like what you're saying, because I, I think that many people, and I know even for myself, you, you lose an inner peace when you try to control what's not in your purview of control. Right. And if we really meditate on what in life is in our control, what we find is so much of our life is not in our control. So, you know, we're, we're trying to control all of these areas of life that just really are not controllable by us at all. And that's where the stress comes in because, you know, we're trying to do something that we can't do. And, and it's not for lack of trying or, or lack of anything else. It's just the fact it's incontrollable you, you or uncontrollable or whatever the word is. Um, that really, if we change our focus on to, well, what can we control? Mm-hmm. You know, what is in that purview that we can make decisions about and influence and really focus our energies there? we're going to find more inner peace because we're actually going to be accomplishing something since it is in our control. You know, so like you're saying with your son, I mean, you know, what, what eventually happens to him is is totally out of probably even his control to some you know degree, but definitely out of your control. Um, But what you teach him about life and about himself is definitely in, in your control. Absolutely. It's a, it's, the, there's a term in society we use as responsibility. Most people take it as like, that's my fault. It's my responsibility. I didn't take care of it. It's my responsibility. I need to take care of it. And to me, your responsibility is your response. It's your response yep. to a situation. It's your response to your circumstances. It's your response to life. And those all come from the, the ways of being, right? And are, are we being joyful? Are we being caring? Are we being compassionate? thoughtful, you know, um, those are all ways of being, but in society and with a lot of people, and I, I, I will be the first to admit that I am I, like, I'm trying to switch gears, you know, because I was taught growing up, you have to do to have, right. You have to do things. You have to work hard. You have to, you know, you have to go to school. You have to, you have to put effort in to have nice things, to have a nice house, to have a good job, to have lots of money, you know, and, I think that the the portion that is missing is really the ways of being, you know, because if I, you know, anybody can tell me if I'm in a bad mood, anybody can tell me how wonderful I am, but I'm not going to hear them because of the way I'm being, right? But anybody can tell me that 
you know, curse me up one side and down another. And if I'm in a high vibrational, happy place, I'm going to be like, ah, okay, sure, whatever, <laughs> you know, have fun mm-hmm. with that. And, you know, so I think that part is missing because I think that, and, you know, I can all, I can't speak, but from, from my perception, my point of view is that people who love what they do always have whatever they want, right? They always get to do whatever they want. So I own my own business. So I consult, I can do life coaching, I can do design work, I can do all of the things that I do, because those are the things that I really love. And Mm -hmm. so I get to be joyful in that I can be creative in that I get to have fun with that I get to, you know, interact with other people and be social. So I get to do all those things. But if I didn't like those things, it would not make me happy. And I wouldn't be making good money. I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have a good energy about what was going on. And, and I wouldn't, that would show in the work that I do is what I'm trying mm-hmm. to do. You know, so but I think that's one of the key areas to staying grounded mm-hmm. that are we doing the things that we're passionate about doing? Yeah. And in, in a similar way with the control versus, you know, what's out of our control is, you know, why do we keep doing those things that we're not passionate about, you know, and, and refocus our energies more important, you know, right. Well, which again, is that going to keep you grounded? No. And and that's the thing is like money just gives us access, right? Mm -hmm. But I have customers that I trade with, I barter with, you know, Mm -hmm. I have one energy worker that I work with and she doesn't do design work and she's not computer savvy. So I do her computer stuff but we trade, you know what I mean? So money doesn't take place. There's no transaction of money there. Mm -hmm. It's a trade of services for services. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we have to start having that perception about things to be able to stay grounded. We not, not the same old over and over again. We have to be able to have some kind of pinprick in the thought process, if you will, right? Where a little bit of light shines through and we go, oh, is that a possibility? Because like for me, I'm constantly questioning my beliefs. If I see something in my experience that I'm not real thrilled about, then I'm literally going, okay, where am I doing that? Where am I aggravating somebody else on on purpose? Where am I yelling at somebody that, you know, is driving crazy in traffic? And and I'll, I'll be the first to admit, if I can see it, great. But if I can't, I'm willing to go, you know what? I see it. I don't like it. I don't want it to be like that. So I'm going to give it forth to you, to God, to spirit. That's what I do. And Mm -hmm. that's what I say, because I want to make sure that I have a cleaner vessel to be able to, to do what I'm supposed to do, but I have to be open and willing and forgiving to, for those things to happen. Right. And, and I think in trying to begin to stay grounded, it's going to start with the inner attitude. Yeah. Since it's our inner attitude that's going to help us to see the world differently. Mm-hmm. You know, so if there's a lot of negativity going on inside of me, then I'm going to view the world around me in a very negative way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the opposite would be true. You know, so if I can go into an event or into a situation, uh, you know, with that positive attitude, then in the end, what am I coming out with is, is it's going to be an overall positive event. So what you've just said is absolutely perfect for the way that I feel like I stay grounded is I don't expect outer circumstances to mm-hmm. make me happy, right? It's an in, inside job. And so when you have that inside work that you're doing, you have the ability to extend it outward. If you don't like what's going on inside, you end up projecting it, which makes you lose your peace and keeps you untethered, if you will, right? You know, you can't stay grounded if you're pushing out what you don't like and into the world, and that's what you're seeing, you know? Um, So it's an inside out job. You know, it works from the inside and then you project it on the outside or you feel it and you see it on the outside. Yep. But in the same way where I, I do believe and I agree with what you're saying, where it, it starts on the inside and projects to the outside. Mm-hmm. To me, then it's also circular 
because now if I'm feeling pretty good on the inside, so I'm projecting this positivity outside and I start to see more positivity around me, I'm going to be feeling even more positive and yeah. therefore more positivity and, you know, that they're circular and then the opposite being true, you know, and, and that's where, you know, I get a lot of clients who say, you know, everything is just negative in the world. And part of that is because everything is negative within themselves. So I want to add to what you just said, because if it's circular, like karmic, right, it comes around, mm -hmm. goes around, but at the same time, you're elevating. So it's, it's yep. like this, you know, and it keeps going up and up. So you're raising your vibration, you're coming up in levels, because if you just stay on the loop itself, then you're chasing your tail. So at some point you can't, you can't to escape the chasing of the tail, you have to rise up a little bit so that you can right. elevate yourself and see, and then elevate a little bit more. And, and you can take that loop, but it, it's like a never ending connection. It's not going to connect. You're just going to keep going up. The loop will keep you chasing your tail. Right. Yeah. And that, that's a good thing to add to that, yeah. you know, um, and I see that elevation in the sense of saying that, you know, you start with a bit of peace and then you see good around you, then you have more of it and then you see more of it, you know, so yes, we're, we're elevating and, and we're going, you know, upward in there. Um, which again, though, the opposite would be true. I think with the negativity, we're, we're going to push ourselves downward. Yeah. And, and, and my concern with our conversation right now is that people are like, Oh, that's Pollyanna stuff. That's, that's nothing but, you know, the power of positivity or motivational stuff, but it, it's not, it's, it's deeper. Mm -hmm. It's a wanting to have a better life. It's a wanter to, yep. you know, um, um, just to be able to continue to just want for more. And, and that doesn't mean physically, that doesn't mean monetarily. It just means to have more peace and to have more joy and, experience it in the world and let others experience it at the same time. Yeah. No, I'm glad that you bring that up because the, I'm definitely not the cutesy Pollyannish type, no. you know, <laughs> if, if people knew me, but I can come across that way because I, I think in a lot of ways it is that simple to living life by, you know, finding the positives, looking you know, in that way and then living, you know, the positives, but part of it too is also what mindfulness teaches us about staying in the present. It doesn't say stay in the present moment when it's good, you know, so even if life is not going well for somebody, that's still what you're going to live with, you know, so when you're living in the present moment, um, and as it says, non-judgmentally, you know, we're not going to judge how we're feeling in this moment. We just know we're not feeling good or it's not a positive feeling, yeah. or we can say truly life is not good at this moment. Um, and we have to live that, you know, but I, I think in, in staying grounded still says, all right, I'm going to have to accept where I am right now and try to figure out what I do next is still a grounded feeling because the positive notion is the, what am I going to do next? Right. You know, it's not saying, well, life is never going to throw me any curveballs. Yeah. It, it's more. So what do I do when that curveball happens? Right. And, that's, and that's where in my mind, the positivity comes in. That's the epitome. What you just said is the epitome of staying grounded because you're firm in knowing that, okay, life's going to happen. And mm -hmm. what's next? okay, this is just a moment. That moment will pass. It will always pass. And you can have an instant where you're like, oh, wait, I have a solution to whatever the perceived problem is. And then I move on. Or, you know, or you can stay there. And normally that's what happens is people stay there. So the staying grounded part is being able to experience the emotions mm -hmm. that go along with whatever the circumstances are. And then still knowing that it's going to be okay that you're, you're learning a lesson of some sort, you're being shown something and it's, it's going to pass. Yeah. Um, and it may not pass as quickly as you would like, hmm. but, you know, looking at, you know, a, a person's history also teaches us a lot. 
because you'll notice that life does continue to move forward. Hmm. And even if your life isn't the greatest and it hasn't been the greatest for years, you can still see that life has continued to move forward. So we're not as stuck as we may feel that we're stuck. That's actually, you just described the universal law of rhythm. So, it, it, you know, we, we wax and we wane, it's in and out, mm-hmm. it's, and down, it's day and night, it's, you know, it's all those things. And so there are going to be highs and lows. And, yep. you know, so I have one teacher who says, you know, like, if I'm having a low, let's say she's having a low month financially, she's like, ooh, I want to make so much more money next month. I just know it, you know, and, and she knows <laughs> that it's going to come back better and better every time. So you're going to have some dips. It's going to happen. Yep. But but when you have that kind of attitude is, is what I'm saying. It's like easy to stay grounded. It's very easy to stay grounded. Right. And, and again, not to sound that, that Pollyannish, you know, I'm not going to say like, Hey, great. I'm, I'm not making money this month. Like, awesome. yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> you know, that, that's not what we're saying at all. But don't you know? get in the fear. Don't get in the fear of yep. never having enough or not having enough. It always works out. 100% right. of the time it always works out. And, and that's where then you may have to put some more energy. And, and again, this would be the positive energy into, so how am I going to make this different so that next month, you know, life is different for me, you know, like what, what do I maybe need to change? Um, and, and that begins to be that focus instead of, yeah, that's sitting back and, and just like, well, you know, I'm a failure or whatever negativity you want to put on that. Yeah. I call it the, the deep, pit of despair that nobody can see you in when you're in <laughs> you know because mentally that's what happens you know oh, yeah. the, a tornado of of thoughts and it can easily funnel you down but when you let those things go and you just let them pass like little wisps of smoke you just have the ability to go like oh that was interesting that that popped through my head but not not impaired that I focus on it not important you know but interesting okay moving on yeah well and that's where part of being grounded for me is the whole thing about solution thought you know so even if it is something that i did that messed up and maybe it messes up the finances or or just some big mistake or whatever so dwelling on that piece is not going to get us anywhere it's not going to advance us anywhere so i can still acknowledge it and say all right i'm the one who messed up but in the solution thought, then that next thought needs to be, so what do I do different? Mm-hmm. What, what, what is, have I learned from this that I'm going to change and that I'm going to do different? Because, you know, I could sit there and dwell on, you know, I messed it up. Or I can acknowledge reality and then say, all right, so how do I fix it? Yeah. You know, and does that mean I need to call in other people to help me? Does that mean I need to do some more research? You know, what does all of that mean? so that I'm solution focused instead of just sitting there, you know, cutting myself down. Yeah. I, I like to call it a, a, I'm a solution finder, not a problem finder. Yeah. Uh, I like that. Yeah. Yep. Well, I like that. Pretty good. I'm um, not sure if uh, you have the little timer up on your screen like I do. <laughs> I do not. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and thank everybody for listening to us today. And, and, um, You know, if you have any kind of uh, things that you have questions on about staying grounded, please feel free to reach out to Chris or myself. We would love to hear from you and your comments. Yeah, definitely. And I appreciate the conversation. And I'm glad that uh, we found the time to finally come together (laughs) again. Um, But yeah, definitely, you know, grateful for everybody who's listening and uh, leave some comments, leave some likes, share this with your uh, family and friends and people that you like um or don't like family functions so you can learn how to stay grounded during them exactly exactly so all right awesome all right bye-bye all right bye